Hi everybody, thanks for watching Access Hacky MI Take Two. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are going to be talking about the Grand Rapids Griffins and their playoff push. We kind of want to do a review kind of where they are now, where we want them to be. Clearly the playoffs, like the <laughs> Calder. Ovi. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, their record is 17, 19, 2, and 2. So not super stellar. They're hanging out around 6th right now in the Central Division, which is higher than they were last week at, like, 8th place. Yeah. So we're making improvements. So today we're going to talk about the things we're doing right as a team, the things that we still need to improve on to make that playoff push. So mm. why don't you get started? I will. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first, we got a bunch of guys back. Yes. Uh, Michael Rasmussen missed almost two full months. He has returned and has been absolutely stellar. So, so. Oh, it's going to keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Joe Valeno, he's back. Moritz Sider, he's back. And who else is back? No one, I think. So Not yet. Not yet. Soon. Yeah. Hand claps to them. Yeah. So the immediate impact of those guys coming back is undeniable. Um, Valeno and Sider had amazing World Junior experiences. Sider was the captain for Team Germany. Mm -hmm. Valeno was an alternate captain for one Team gold. Canada. One gold. Very um, Germany made it through the relegation round, which is actually huge, so go Germany. Yes. Um, and then with Ras coming back from injury, that's intensely difficult after that amount of time. Mm -hmm. It didn't look like he missed a beat, honestly. Like, he was a fantastic offensive push in the yeah. center there. He's a great net front presence, so yes. you can always tell when he's on the ice and he's in front of the net. Really good at getting those points, of course, because that net front usually gets a lot of deflections, things like that. So he's already in the right places doing the right mm -hmm. things. And like Rachel said, um, Cider and Valena both said that they got a lot of confidence from the World Junior Championship. So the major difference would be that they're playing against kids in the World Juniors, the kids their age, 18s, <laughs> <U> 20s. 20s. <laughs> yeah, the younger. And right now in the AHL, they're playing against adults. They're playing against men, full-grown. They've done this for years, men. Mm -hmm. So Not that afraid would be, to hit them. That would be one thing. But that's really good for them because yes. they're coming back. They're doing what they need to do. Right now they're in the AHL. They're working on their skills for that. Mm -hmm. and the World Juniors only helps with the it experience. Does and playing mm -hmm. him Well, we nights. saw it a little bit with Zadina last season mm -hmm. when he was invited to the World Juniors and to represent the Czech Republic for him. It's a huge honor for these guys. They don't take it lightly. So I think when they come back, it is a confidence booster yeah. to know they can translate that somehow and mm -hmm. to figure out how to do we it. And obviously with little, Zadina. And, yeah, they did this little uh, tribute to them too ah, at so the cool. Griffins game. Nice. So I think everybody, they feel that the fans, you know, they're behind them mm -hmm. regardless of what country you're from. We're behind our yeah. team. That kind of thing. So it's super cool. Hockey's a unified sport. It's what we do. Love it. <laughs> um, another thing, the penalty kill is fantastic right now. We're sixth in the Western Conference. So out of 15 teams, we're hanging out at six. Mm -hmm. And that's really good. Um, a lot of the lower teams right now are like in 11%. So we're yeah. way ahead of that. Fantastic. Not only killing off the penalties, right. but also getting some shorthanded goal opportunities. I'm yeah. not sure if it's more than one this year, but I know Dominic Turgeon in a recent game had scored mm -hmm. a shorthanded goal, mm -hmm. which is great to see. It's a great confidence booster. You're not only doing your PK right, but you're also getting a point, which right. is, um, it's, it almost should be, you know, it's the other way around. It should be a point against, but it's right. not. So it's super cool. Yeah. But it's cool too, because they're getting those opportunities and whether or not they're scoring on them, they're also not letting that puck beat them back into yes. the defensive zone. Yes. So they're able to create that rush. Like Dominic Shine was another one that mm -hmm. recently, I think he had two shorthanded opportunities. He just broke away yeah. and still able to get back and not let a goal go. So mm -hmm. that has been a tremendous improvement and I think it's only going to get better. It, yeah. Here. It's definitely being smart. So you shouldn't, yeah. of course, we're not saying like <laughs> always try to score goals being smart of course making yeah. sure you're still protecting your goaltender he's the biggest penalty kill unit on the ice <laughs> unit you hear it. <laughs> yeah just person on the ice so um another great thing that they've been speaking of goaltending has been the goaltending stability of calvin pickard has mm -hmm. been incredible the last few That's games off to you picks so in his last three games he's won yeah. which does have it does speak to, of course to the rest of the team but mm -hmm. he has just been stellar in that so that's phenomenal has been very good as yeah. far as like um confidence for the team confidence for the fans for him confidence so just feeling like you can go out there and i got this yeah. We got this. We can win this. Yeah. And I think that's what he's got. It's easy to get into a defeated mindset, I think. And so sure. when you string a couple wins together, you know, they start believing a little bit more. Not that they didn't in the first place, but I don't know. It's just it's just a little pat on the back. And I'm like, yeah, you guys can do this. Exactly, easy. Yeah. So maybe not easy, but they can do it. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard watching. I can't imagine doing it. Yeah. Um, the last. And, oh, did oh, you want to talk about I was going to gush. Go for it. Okay. Go I love it. Joey Hicketts, and this one's about him and the defenseman stepping up like crazy. Yes. Hicketts Indeed. right now is third in the team among po with points. He just surpassed Turner Elson. And I don't think, I can't confirm this, but I don't think he's done that yet. Since his rookie season. His rookie so, season, he tied a record. So I just think that that. 
that's also speaking to his growth as a yeah. player and the defensive growth yeah. as a player. So kudos yeah. to the defensive coaches. He knows the and, fight he's got to have. Yeah. But it's also leading the way because yes. all the other defensemen seem to be kind of catching this momentum mm-hmm. and scoring goals where previously they didn't. Or, a lot. I think something I've noticed that you said previously, we're getting a lot more pucks to the net. Mm-hmm. I think that you can see it in a game when it's just you're trying to look for the open lane, you're trying to pass, you're looking for the open lane. I think a kind lot of sitting, waiting too long. A lot of the goals yeah. defensemen get is just throwing the puck to the net. And, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> either a deflection or it went in or something yeah. like that. So he's third in the team with points right now, so he's doing amazing. Yeah. Um, Cholowski has been getting some points as well, so yeah. that's really encouraging to yeah, see. He got his first goal of the season recently. But so when that's... you have offense, of course, doing their job, and you've got defense mm-hmm. doing some offense, yeah. you're going to get some yeah. encouragement. Knowing some if the right. defenseman takes that shot, there's other guys there that will take that rebound. Sure. They're ready to go for it, and even Cider, Cider obviously, he's been doing really well. <laughs> um, Cider does well. Yeah, exactly. There's a couple things, though, that going into the next part of the season, kind of finishing out to the playoffs, that have got to be worked on a little bit. Um, one being the power play. Yeah, and it oh, is wow. fifth in our conference, which is actually a little surprising to me. It I'm is. I'm going to be honest, because if you it watch is. it firsthand, you're a little like, oh my. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't um, watch. <laughs> yeah, it's a little difficult. Of course, it always depends on the team you're playing against, how good their PK is, but I would think I think we need to build on that power mm-hmm. play still. We need to get more shooting opportunities, need to keep it in the zone longer. All those cliche terms that you get when you're <laughs> talking about Full 60 power minutes. Play. <laughs> Full 60 minutes. But um, building on that power play is going to be really important. Mm-hmm. If you can't score, if it's not a given that you're going to get a goal on the power play, yeah. we know that. it's a little bit of a deficit <laughs> yeah. going into the playoffs where those power plays are real important. Mm-hmm. And it kind of mimics where they were at last season, too. The power play was something they struggled in. They made mm-hmm. it into the playoffs, lost the first round. And that power play is critical in the playoffs because that could be your only scoring opportunity, your only good scoring opportunity. Right. And it kind of makes the team pay for doing something yeah. dumb. So. Yeah, exactly. So why <laughs> not great. score? <laughs> <laughs> so with that too, and there are always little things like there's a line that comes out and they absolutely kill it, and then a line that comes out maybe the change isn't so great. You know, just kind of fine tuning those little things. Also, those transitions. I, that also comes into it. We've got some new guys on the power play. Yep. You know, they're learning the role. They're learning like Pearson this year is on the. Yep. I think he's on the power he's play. He's taking a lot of face-offs too. Yeah, there there's these guys who are still learning, and I think that is the learning curve that we have to remember as fans yep. is that these things are going to take some time. They're not going to be like perfect yeah. immediately. And we did say so. Our PK has been great but I think we just need to keep building on that so that would be another improvement that we would see is just keep building on the PK making sure that that's rock solid to get into the playoffs and those are really our three improvements getting some guys back would be great yeah um from Detroit but (laughs) might not happen but yeah that's okay we want them there we love that they're um developing there that's wonderful news um, and go Red Wings too. So yeah. if you like this video, let us know. Let us know kind of what you're thinking about the Griffins right now. Who's standing out to you? Who's maybe lacking in mm-hmm. your view of, you know, being a good player so far this season? Uh, what do you think so far about the Red Wings season? Anything you want to put down there, really. Just put it down there. Yeah, you know? I like to talk. Happy. Comments. That's why we do this. Yeah. Please talk to us about how. <laughs> <laughs> no one else wants to. <laughs> we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching again. And have a great rest of your day, your night. Whatever time of the time you watch this. (laughs) Bye, guys.